Welcome to the WISIS Forum 2017. My guest is Dominic Vergin, Head of Sustainability at ARM. Dominic, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. So Dominic, your company has been working very closely with UN agencies over the past few years. Can you tell us about your work to basically use technology to enhance uh, and speed up the delivery of SDGs? Yes, uh, we've been working with um, with UNICEF. Uh, we did a program with them called Wearables for Good, about how you might shift perceptions on wearables from being life lifestyle accessories to life-saving products. And that was a very successful partnership. Um, and so we, we then looked to see who else we could work with and began working with WHO, and now with uh, starting with FAO and um, UN Global Compact. So we're working really across the UN system. And our interest is, um, how can technology support all 17 goals? So technology is a tool and it shouldn't be seen in isolation, it should be seen in the context of all the different global challenges and, and how it can underpin it. So as a result, we created uh, a new initiative called 2030 Vision, which will be launching uh, this December in London. Uh, that's in partnership with numerous UN agencies, uh, NGOs, universities, and what we're trying to do is look at the challenges through the lens of the business sectors that relate to it. So agriculture, retail, logistics, um, pharmaceuticals, and see what they are looking out uh, to 2030 in their digital, um, their digital vision, their, their hopes for technology, and then trying to see how we can help support and underpin that. So very much shifting things around a little so that it's not technology centric, it's actually really focused on needs and in incredible business opportunities within the goals as well. And there again, technology is not uh, an end in itself, it's a tool, isn't it? Mm, exactly, exactly right. So um, to make it demand driven uh, is very, very important. If you think about something like uh, the smart city, to truly create a smart city will require unprecedented levels of collaboration across sectors and government departments and um, industries that traditionally haven't worked together, haven't collaborated. So we're, we need to move into a time where these traditional silos start crumbling um, and uh, it's no longer unusual for a, a semiconductor design company like Arm to partner with uh, an organisation like UNICEF or for us to work with uh, a company in, um, uh, in, in food and beverage uh, because we'll need to do that in order to create the right um, new technologies to achieve the goals. And what can you tell us about this partnership with ITU and the World Health Organisation? It's called Be Healthy, Be Mobile. So yeah. can you expand a bit further? So, so Be Healthy, Be Mobile is uh, uh, an initiative that WHO and ITU set up really in order to bring in uh, a number of, of partners to look at uh, technology in, uh, in healthcare, so d digital health. We've just recently joined and one of the reasons why we've joined is we've been s supporting a number of um, uh, startups and new innovations in, in health um, for a while and we wanted to see which of them might be right for scaling up. So some of them are already reaching uh, several hundred thousand people uh, and we've got a lot of data to show the effectiveness of these technologies um, but we wanted to find a partner who could really take them to national scale and, and move from helping hundreds of thousands to hundreds of millions. And um, WHO have now, now looked at, at the, the different uh, initiatives that we've been supporting and have selected a couple that they think are suitable for scaling up. And the first being uh, a technology that focuses on behaviour change in some of the poorest communities in the world. Could you give us a specific example of how mobile technology can help enhance people's health? Yes, um, so I mean, it's not, not just mobile, so actually the, the name uh, Be Healthy Be Mobile, I think uh, it's evolving beyond that now. And if you look at some of the poorest communities, you need to be quite flexible over whether you have or haven't got connectivity. Um, so we have to drive the, the costs right down and create technology that is suitable for uh, uh, users that may be um, illiterate or semi-literate, uh, subsistence farmers. Um, the impact that it can have can be really profound. So um, this particular program 
uh, uses content in local languages. Um, and it might be things like um, the kind of advice a midwife would give. But of course, these uh, communities don't have access to, to a midwife, to these services. Or it might be advice on, um, uh, on, on the crops that they would be growing, specific to the area. And uh, in, some, uh, in some instances, the, uh, the villages using this technology have seen a 50% increase in crop yield. Now, if you're a s subsistence farmer, that's a very profound increase to your family income. Um, and that increase in income means that you might be able to send more of your children to school, uh, that you can afford better health care, um, and it can really li help lift people out of poverty. So the results are there to be seen. Uh, what kind of feedback are you getting uh, from the communities using your technology or your programs? Well, it's uh, uh, very gratifying to see that, um, uh, and this is it, it's good to see some, some examples of, of how the communities are benefiting that aren't anything to do with the program. So um, in some areas there are farming awards and um, we've seen that uh, the vast majority of farmers winning the local farming awards are users of the technology. So it's, it's evident that uh, it's, it's helping their, their livelihoods um, and they're getting recognition in the community for actually performing really well. Um, so uh, there's, there's a lot of data coming out now to show how effective it is. And as we scale up, we'll get more and more. And we'll also be able to tailor things. So we also get data back to say, actually, this particular aspect isn't working for some reason. And then we can go in and have a look at it and adjust it until it starts having the positive effect we're looking for. Well, that's the thing. Thanks to big data, the Internet of Things, you can actually quickly readjust if you have to. Yes, exactly right. Dominic, thank you very much. Thank you.